Welcome to Our Lady Lourdes Parish in Massapequa Park, New York. I'm Monsignor Jim Lasanti, and we are praying together with you the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let's begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And to better celebrate Mass, we look into our hearts, and we confess our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And so we pray. Let us pray for health in mind and body and soul. God of power and love and mercy, protect us from all harm. Give us freedom of spirit and health in mind and body and soul so that we can do your work on earth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. It happened that seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. One of the brothers, speaking for the others, said, What do you expect to achieve by questioning us? We are ready to die rather than transgress the laws of our ancestors. At the point of death, he said, You accursed fiend, you are depriving us of this present life. But the king of the world will raise us up to live again forever. It is for his laws that we are dying. After him, the third suffered their cruel sport. He put out his tongue at once when told to do so, and bravely held out his hands as he spoke these noble words. It was from heaven that I received these. For the sake of his laws, I disdain them. From him, I hope to receive them again. Even the king and his attendants marveled at the young man's courage because he regarded his sufferings as nothing. When he was near death, he said, It is my choice to die at the hands of men with the hope God gives of being raised up by him. But for you, there will be no resurrection to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My 
my steps have been steadfast in your paths. My feet have not faltered. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Lord, where may your glory appears, my joy will be full. Keep me as the apple of your eye, Hide me in the shadow of your wings, but I in justice shall behold your face. On waking I shall be content in your presence. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through his grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and word. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us, so that the word of the Lord may speed forward and be glorified as it did among you and that we may be delivered from perverse and wicked people. For not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. We are confident of you in the Lord, that what we instruct you, you are doing and will continue to do. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the endurance of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and power for ever and ever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married a woman but died childless, then the second and the third married her, and likewise, all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman herself died. Now at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. And Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and remarry, but those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels. And they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the passage about the bush, when he called out, Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And he is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Thanks for joining us on this 32nd Sunday, a very, very important time and good readings. We'll talk about them and 
This past week, we've been all the priests here at Our Lady Lords praying the uh, the novena for All Souls Day, remembering and praying for all the loved ones who've been given to us. Your names have been passed on to us so that we can pray for those you love who we pray are now in heaven. So just so you know, we've been doing that novena and praying for all the people you love and that we hope and pray all the people we love are treasured by God in heaven. Okay, let's get into this reading right away. First of all, the book of Maccabees. So you've got these seven brothers and a mom. And what's the issue here? They have religious dedicated principles. They know who they are. They know what they believe. They trust in their God. Now, in every age, you come into the world and you're taught certain values that you know matter and are real and are genuine and are rooted in who we are, what we believe. But in any culture, in any age, there are going to be temptations to walk away from that which you treasure, that which you always knew, that which you value. I see it so often sometimes when you read uh, any kind of biography about someone in popular life or public life, and when they start with the sentence, well, I was raised Catholic, but... You know that somewhere along the line, they wandered off the farm. Somewhere along the line, someone convinced them there was something better out there, so they drifted away. Well, these seven brothers and their mom are not drifting away. They have religious principles, religious points of view that are convicted. They know what they believe, they know why they believe, and no one anywhere is going to dissuade them. Now, along come these evil kings in the story who say, well, if you don't renounce your religious principles, in this case, eating pork, we're going to kill you one by one, and your mother too. And so if they wanted to fit in and be spared, then the wise thing in the ways of the world would be to say, okay, we'll eat pork, we'll do whatever you want, just don't hurt us. None of the brothers will submit. The brothers and the mom say, no, this is who we are, and if this means our death, we're not frightened because we know there's a life beyond this life. We know there's a greatness in life beyond this earthly life, and that's heaven. And if you end our lives too early now, evil as that is on your part, we're not worried because for doing God's will, we know we're going home to be rewarded for our faithfulness. Now, what's this got to do with you and me? I think we are living, and not the first time in human history, in the age of the Gumby personality. If you remember from when you were a kid, Gumby is that little plastic or rubbery figure that kids play with, and you can bend it any which way you want. It has no spine. It's easily shaped to whoever wants to bend it. And I think we're living in a culture where people want to fit in so badly and want to be accepted by everybody and be liked by everybody that we have no rooted principles. You know, these seven brothers and their mom were willing to die for the sake of what they believed. Let me give an example, a couple of examples from popular life that come to mind. Um, so Congressman Richard Gephardt or uh, then Senator Joe Biden say, no, 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 we're going to support a human life amendment to the Constitution because somebody's got to speak for the unborn child until their party goes in another direction and says, if you want to get ahead, you ever want to occupy the White House, you've got to renounce what you believe about the sacredness of human life and the sacredness of the unborn child and be willing to take the life of that child at any moment up until birth. And you say, well, clearly both the social and religious and human principle of the sacredness of life would make people who really had convictions say, no, sorry, if it means my ambitions won't be fulfilled, then so be it. But I can't, on the one hand, say I believe that the child in the womb deserves protection, and then completely 180 and say, no, but if you want to kill that child until the moment it's born, the full nine months, that's okay too, because I just want to get ahead. These seven brothers would have said to Mr. Gephardt, and, and to Mr. Biden, don't do that. You've got to have some principles that last. If the sacredness of the life of the child was valuable to you once, why would it stop being valuable? Well, how about Jesse Jackson? We all know the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Pre-1988, this is what he used to say, I can't be neutral, he said, about the abortion issue. My mother conceived me when she was 16, and everybody told her to get rid of me. So for me, he said, it's personal. Had she embraced the abortion mentality, I wouldn't be alive. So I've got to call myself pro-life. And then 1988, he decides to run for president, and he, he, he tells us he's evolved. And now he decides it's okay to have abortion. Well, Jesse, your story hasn't changed. Your mother still had you when she was 16, and, you know, she could easily have chosen not to. And you're here because of the heroic choice she made, and you said that used to make you believe something that you no longer believe, because why? 
because of ambition. Well, let's take a look at uh, President Barack Obama. Up until he's running for president, he says, because of my religious background, I believe that marriage is between one man and one woman. And all right, people respect it. They may disagree with him, but they respect what he has to say. The moment the election is over, and he has carried more conservative states than people thought he could carry, he now says, I've evolved. I now believe that anybody, two men, two women, can get married. It's no longer limited to a man and a woman. I've evolved. Maybe all these guys have really evolved, but you know and I know what it sounds like. Like, okay, how's the wind blowing? And that our principles can change with the wind. This reading, the heroic choice of the seven brothers and their mom, is a way of saying somewhere along the line, don't you have to believe that there are principles that cannot be compromised? Don't we have to believe that there are things that are so deeply rooted in who we are as children of God that we simply cannot sell them away for the sake of momentary pleasure or momentary success on earth? We're going to have to answer to a God for all eternity who says, wait a second, you knew the truth in your heart of hearts, but you gave away the truth for the sake of what? Popularity, success, an elected office, people liking you? These brothers and their mothers said no. If it means our death, so be it. But we cannot and we will not compromise. Somewhere along the line, you know, you and I have got to examine, I see this in marriage counseling all the time, you know, a guy falls in love with a, a woman and he's convinced that he's going to love this woman forever and ever, but later on, she's got a few children, she's put on a pound or two, the money isn't quite there, there's a lot of pressure at home, and there's somebody at work who looks pretty good, who's interested. And suddenly he says, well, I love my wife, but I'm also in love with this one. But you know, when you got married, you said you believed in this singular love, this unity of love, one person that you would love forever. What happened to that value? What happened to that principle? Is everything we have negotiable? Is every idea and value that we say we treasure able to be given away? These brothers and their moms said, no, there are some things that you cannot give away. And that the person who is truly rooted in God says, there are some things on which I cannot and I will not compromise. Let's go to the second reading. Great reading we have from St. Paul to the Thessalonians. And here I think is the key line. May we be delivered from perverse and wicked people. May we be delivered from perverse and wicked people. Look, it's no secret to you and me. We become very, very often, unless we're very strongly rooted people, we become very much like the people we tend to hang out with. And so if we hang out with good people, people who are kind, merciful, loving, and reflect the love of Jesus in all that they say and do, it's a good thing for us. We're probably going to then be led by their example, and we will probably become more like the true Christian we're supposed to be. But it's also true that if we hang out with people for whom bigotry and meanness and gossip and a cutting quality of speech is their way, Sooner or later, we're going to buy into their value system. I'd like to believe that we can remain who we are, even in the midst of people who are a bad influence. But the truth is, and we see this especially with our kids, if you love your kids and you see that they're hanging out with people who are leading them astray, your job is not to go along to get along. I hope that every parent, every grandparent, every aunt and uncle, every teacher, every priest and deacon will have the ability to say to a kid, I love you, and because I love you, I'm telling you, hanging out with those folks is not going to end wisely or well. And I'm telling you, there are choices you have to make, and sometimes you're going to miss those people who are your friends, because they're a lot of fun to be with, but they're not good for you. And I'm asking you to please step away from them. Don't you and I, even as adults, know that if we hang out with some people, they're going to bring us down, they're going to invite us into a world where we're going to be more sinful, more inclined to be unkind, sarcastic, nasty, gossipy, bigoted, and small-minded. We're not just the people we hang out with, but they sure do have an influence. And I think St. Paul is saying to us, be careful about the people you choose to populate your life with, because they do have an impact. They do have a meaning for us. And sometimes we can think that the stuff that they're about, bad as it may be, is normative, and we get too comfortable with the bad stuff instead of calling them to the good. Now, you can say, if it's true for you, by the way, you say, you know what, but I'm good. And I do hang out with people who aren't so good. But I think I can bring them along. I can make them better people good for you. But just be aware of the great temptation to become not better by being out with people who are 
about wrong values, but by instead sinking into the values that they embrace and in the process compromising who we are, what we believe, what we value, what we treasure. Whether you're an adult or an adult responsible for a child, we're all called on to evaluate. Who am I hanging out with? Am I calling them to my goodness or are they pulling me down to their level of badness? And if we have to make a separation and say, whether we say it or not, I like you, I wish we could have a longer term friendship, but when I'm with you, I find that the worst elements of my personality thrive, and that's not good. St. Paul is saying to us, beware of the wicked and perverse, and be careful about befriending them, and in the process, becoming ourselves perverse and wicked. And finally, to the gospel. You know, what the Sadducees are trying to do is set Jesus up. They're trying to say, okay, well, here are all the rules, and what about these rules that don't make any sense when you go to your so-called kingdom of heaven? Like, who's going to be the spouse to whom? And what Jesus is trying to say to us is, you know what? The rules simply don't apply. We can't even imagine heaven. We can't imagine what it is to be in a kingdom where is the fullness of life and love and joy and peace and refreshment. We think in human terms, which are necessarily because we're human, limited. And Jesus is saying to the Sadducees, stop thinking by the rule book of the Jewish faith and recognize that with God, everything is possible. And don't try to box God into the old rules, the way we were brought up. Well, this is what I always thought it had to be. You're thinking in small minded human terms where the kingdom of God is beyond our understanding. And so some people get nervous when they hear this gospel. They say, wait a second, I really love my wife. I love my husband. And if Jesus is saying that marriage doesn't exist like it did on earth, then am I not going to be with the love of my life in heaven? That's not what he's saying at all. He's saying that heaven is the fullness of life and love, and that the love you felt with that husband and that wife, multiply it by a million times, that's what happens in heaven. It's not like we lose our wife, we lose our husband, but we are completely fulfilled by a love beyond our understanding, a love so great it's beyond the human mind and the human heart, and the Sadducees trying to trick Jesus into limiting the kingdom of heaven, limiting life beyond this life, are just expressing their own foolishness. And what has that got to do with your life and mine? Sometimes we think we've got it all figured out when it comes to our religion. We know what we've got to do, what rules we have to follow, what guidelines we have to embrace. And then if we do it all, then everything's going to be fine. But sometimes I think this gospel is also calling us to think outside the box. You know, there are people we would say, oh, I don't want them in church, right? They're not like us. They're not good. They're public or major sinners. And yet, what do we find in the gospel? But Jesus choosing to spend his time with them. Because Jesus thought outside the Jewish box of his time and said, I haven't come for some, I've come for all. And those most in need are the ones we want to especially invite. All the time, as a pastor, I find you know, people saying, I'd like to come to your church, but I've got this problem or that. I was married outside the church. We're part of a lesbian couple. We've got this problem or that problem. We've got this challenge. We know we haven't always followed the rule book of the church. And I say to them, what I believe our Lord would say, come and see, come and join us, come pray with us, but know no matter where you're coming from, where you've been, what you've done, that the rules don't apply when it comes to keeping you from worship, and that you should come and pray with us and see what we believe and why we believe, but just know you are always, always welcome. It's not some who are expected in the kingdom of God, it's all of us. And what does Jesus say time and time again? I want you all home with me. It is the will of my Father that I lose no one. And that takes the courage of principle to open our minds and our hearts and to see everyone, even people who are diametrically opposed to us, as a possible friend if we only invite them to become part of the family. I know I've told you this before, but one of the things I used to love and being most active in the pro-life movement was how often my pro-life friends would pray for doctors who would be doing abortions, or our old friend Bill Baird who wrote, ran an abortion clinic in Hempstead. He was so annoyed that instead of hurling words of hatred at him, the pro-lifers would say, Bill, we love you and we pray for you, and you're always welcome to join us. I don't want their love. I don't want their prayers, he'd say. 
but secretly he was very moved by the fact that these people would not embrace hatred, but would love somebody who made his living by terminating unborn children. And yet those pro-lifers were doing precisely what we're all called on to do, to be sources of invitation, to think outside the box, to be the welcoming presence of Jesus that we hope each of us is called to be. Final thought, I go back to one of my pictures. Um, you know, all these readings are about the same thing. Have the courage of your convictions. Be true. Be genuine. Don't wash away your principles for the sake of acceptance in the popular parlance, the popular square. I want to show you a picture. This is a picture of Margaret Colan. She's on the lower left there. Now, Margaret is an actress. Uh, you may have seen her in the movie Independence Day, where she played Harrison Ford's wife in The Devil's Own. Uh, she had a TV show called Now and Again. She's now on a popular show called Chicago MD. She played Jackie Kennedy on Broadway in a play called Jacqueline. She's a very talented actress. And with her are her dad, John, and her mom, Doris. Now, early on, her mom and dad planted values in Margaret that said, every life is sacred from womb to tomb, and every life deserves protection. So from an early age, she knew that all life was sacred, including that of the preborn child. Now, when you go Hollywood and you become a very successful actor, as she is, it's very, very easy to wash down your principles, to fit in, to go along, to get along. And yet Margaret never has. She's like those seven brothers in the first reading. This is who I am. This is what I believe. When she went before the Congress to testify on behalf of the unborn child, or when she spoke against uh, genetic cloning, human cloning, that certainly wasn't a popular idea. When she's active in Feminists for Life, again, not a popular idea. And I said to her one time in one of our interviews, is it possible you've lost jobs in TV or the movies because you are unapologetically pro-life? And she said, maybe, but this is who I am. And I believe those principles that she to this day as an adult has were planted by these two great, holy, wonderful, kind, beautiful people, Doris and John, her parents. But as importantly, Margaret not only was given these values by her parents, but she chose freely to live them because they made sense. All of us attempted to go along to get along. All of us can be like those politicians I mentioned early on who believed one thing one day, and then when the wind changed, believed something else. Or we can be like our friend Margaret Colin. This is who I am. This is what I believe. Life was sacred at every stage of its development when I was young and taught that by my parents and my faith. And now that I'm an adult, not just because of them, but because I believe it, I cannot compromise. I cannot sell my values. I cannot tell you what you want me to say, but I must say what I am and what I believe. And I will not compromise. The seven brothers and their mom would not compromise. St. Paul is challenging us not to compromise when it comes to who we surround ourselves as friends. And Jesus is saying, don't be boxed in by anyone or anything, but think with the mind and heart of the eternal love of God. Final thought, I promise. This week, if you're in America, you're going to on Tuesday have an opportunity to go and to vote. You can make a difference if you don't vote. One of the things I will never understand is when we hear these statistics of in some elections only 40 or 50 or maybe in a good year 60% of citizens going to vote. Are you kidding? Look around the world. Look at China. Look at Russia. Look at Iran. Look at Korea. They would give anything to have the ability to freely choose to vote, but they can't because they're captive nations, because they live in totalitarian states. We live in the greatest land in the world, which allows us the freedom to choose our leaders and to vote. On uh, Tuesday morning, I'll be over in beautiful uh, polling booth where I go to vote, and I'll be voting there as I have every year since I was 18. And it's not always convenient to get there, but I'll never pass on the privilege to say, this is what I believe, this is who I am, and I will make that point of view known by the way in which I vote. But I can't make a difference at all if I pass on this incredible freedom you and I have to say what we are, what we believe, by casting our vote. Don't sit back and hope that somebody somewhere will do it. It's your job and it's mine to speak up. And there's no better way to speak up than by casting our vote for the values that truly matter. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now with confidence in the goodness of God, let's offer our prayers of petition. That the church may proclaim with joyful hope the resurrection of the dead in Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. That world leaders may secure religious liberty for people of every nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who labor on the land and gather the earth's harvest, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially Joe Amarin, Kathy Orofino, Anthony Di Giovanni, Lisa Del Campo, Bernie and Alice Henley, Kevin Leprohan, Jaime Pitark, Amporo Monsalve, Jersey Mikrut, Madison Magno, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Ethel P. Kleinhaus, Maxo Marcellin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, Nelson Sweeney, Veronica Giordano, All Souls Novena, Purgatorial Society, Marie Bonarigo, Frank and Mary Liberio, Anne Marie Conroy, Esther Di Pietra, Susan Baranski, whom we remember in this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let me add now a list of those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, as well as those who have died. For my friend Carol Silva, I pray for Tommy Burke and for Joe Bustatizo. I pray for Oakley uh, Gerberdick. I pray uh, for Oakley is two and a half years old and suffering from a uh, neuroblastoma, very serious illness. We pray for the baby at two and a half, Oakley. I pray as well for Debbie Walker's brother, Chris. I pray for Lydia, the mother-in-law of my friend James Snyder. Pray for Peter Raber and for Carol Eshandi and for Christopher Kuttner. I pray too for Douglas Lowe, for Joan Moschella. Uh, I want to pray for her in consolation for the son she's lost and another who's seriously ill. I pray for Ray Shelley. Among the sick, I pray for Peter Visconti and for Bill Kirchhoff, for Doug Ohodo, Barbara Turley, baby Emily Quart. I pray for baby Penny Grace. Also, Barbara Truglio, Mary Littress, Veronica Tucker, Thomas Lauer. I pray for all those suffering addictions of any kind at all. I pray for Kevin Shields and for Michael Cataldi, for George Gill and Michael Cardone, for Shailene Eisencraft, Noah Torelli, Laura Lishan. Pray for Georgie Ritter, for Al, Angelo, and Bridget Clementi, for Garrett Hudson, for Michael Campagna, for Laura Elizabeth Steele. I pray for Anthony Posterino and Jody. Pray for Dennis Sweeney, for Vern Kenny, for Bob and Nan Telasco, for Rita Pizzi, Marilyn Segulo, as well as Sean McGrail. Among the sick, I pray for Ronald Butler, for Steve Gagliardi, my dear friend who's going through some challenging times. I pray for Byron DeMilo, as well as for Kelly Schultz. Let me pray for Dorothy, the mom to Sheila Blanchard, for Russell Castro Giovanni, for Dario Rivera. I pray for Cara Mooney McElderry. Let me pray for Loretta Sweeney, as well as for Roseanne Simone, Barbara Simone, Dave Walsh, Anthony Scotto, Jim Harmon, Heidi Ignoski, Judge Tony Falanga. Dear Tony was released this week from the hospital. He's home. I pray for his continued well-being and strength. I pray for Van Tutwiler. As always, I pray for my uh, growing each day in strength, my mom, Cecilia. I pray for Leanne Lasanti, my, my cousin, Ron Citrano, Jim Barr, Anthony Kremi. 
I pray for Nancy Lang and Joan Donovan, for Dean McDonald and Marilyn Arbogast, my old friend Nancy Palumbo, Pat McTaggart, Ann Mendes, Nick Castellano, Jorge Clemente, Anthony Ponte, Emma Nicole. I pray too as well for Thomas Brown, for baby Owen Andrews, for Kathy Bordengo, my good friend, for Brian Bronzini, Tommy Swengross, I hear is doing better, my friend down in Virginia. I pray for Lacey Ward, Edward Baker, Michael Messina, Drew Layton, Joe Falgiano, dear Joe. Pray for Mary and Pat Sears. Pray for Billy Campanaro, Lou Imperioli, Kathy Orfino, Elena, Aileen, Patricia McGrail, Edith Consiglio, Kimberly Cusack. For Michael and Zachary Chanover. For Marion Barone, Joey Silvestro. I pray as well for Millie Bolando and Mary Rao. For Marie Tenay, for Bella Glauda, for Bill Franca. Pray for Dennis M. Dowd and Jennifer Murphy. For Jamie Scotto. For Dennis Donovan, Carly Fregola, and Joseph Grafeo. Among the sick, I pray for Larry Lewis, Barbara and Keith Romagnesi. I pray for Donna Pinholster and Maria Cariola. Pray for Amy Seifert, for Jenny Chimluski. I pray for Helen and Bob Fenwick, for the whole Caravano family, for Francis Interanti and Janet Chevelle. Pray for Susie and Vinnie Vignardi. I pray for Larry Meyer and Dennis Cooney and Muriel Meyer. And then among those who have died, I keep in mind Joseph Sardone and Sophia Maglione, pray for Jean and Nicholas Delario, for Bill Kelly, for Catherine and William Donovan, for Richard Rose Marin. I know his family is coming to church this weekend to pray for Dick, pray for Mary, pardon me, for Billy and Michael Sarasoli, for Lorraine and Ray Campbell, for Dawn Spitali, Nicholas and Sally Cordararo, for the Lacazzi family, for the Bradley family, for Corinne Locke, my dear friend, for John and Maureen and Ann Raber, for Joseph McGrath, Arlene Wolfarth, Mary and Ed Raber, Chuck DeHart, John Slade, Mary and Joseph Monopoly, for John and Alma Kappa, for Fel Morali, for Michael Mansella, for John Neeson, for Kenny Bolando, for Christina Formato, Cynthia Prague, Caroline Dodaro, Gaetano Sal and Angelo Emilo, Anthony Preziosi, Kevin Brown, Pauline Romano, and Ed and June Jandovitz, Mary and Charlie Nobile, Linda Nobile O'Brien, Sam and Rose Pecora, Irene Romano, John Simone, Rocco Pasola, as well as Marjorie Geary. I pray for uh, Kristen Sedita. Uh, I want to pray as well for Nick Sabo, for Nicholas James Albertson, for Luigi Antonio Rosmini, for Gemma Stumpo Rosmini, for Ernie Medietz, for Nancy Murphy, for Elizabeth Perry Sobel, and Amelia Alaka. For Rich Hurley, for Sandra Mariah, for Dennis Diamond. I pray for Anne Maria Tenay, for Billy Taylor, and of course my dearest old friend, Monica Kerrison. and praying as well for the well-being of her still with us wonderful husband, Ray. I pray for Robbie and Jim Purick. Pray for Regina Robinson, Jimmy Soldo, Joan and John Donnelly, Richard Jackal, Henry Meyer, Barry Champney, Colin and Tommy Ryan, Eleanor Mazzi, Father John, Monsignor John Alessandro, Brian Hussey and his beautiful daughter Suzanne Scanio, Mary Rose and John Brosnan, Ronald Schiappo, Leon Sherman Jr., Kate Kelly, Marie Socolo, Connie and Sal Cusimano, Norbert Bobby Gomez, Ted Scorcia, Mike Scorcia, Jerry Monk, Vincent Castoria Jr., Dave Robin, Thomas O'Shea, Matthew Toriello. Pray for Marie Austin, Vita Palmieri, Emily LaFasso, Kathleen Smith, John Arturi, Raymond Kennedy, Connor, and Will Robles. I pray for Mary Ohodo, as well as for uh, Bessie Senna, and Diana, by Diane Atencio, Luigi Conti, Tracy Wachowski, Dale Louise Odom. I pray for Joe and Marion Bacigalupo and Elmer Schantz. For Pat Sistar, Alex Haliasos, Marvin Klein, Peggy Barr. I pray for Joan Caldwell. I pray for Jerry and Edward Casal, as well as Judge Don Belfi. For Raymond Hussey, for my dad, Nicholas. I pray for Tina DeBello, for Joe and Joan Largan, for Father Joe Lukaszewski, Father Ken Marks, Father Tim Hurton, Paul Stashute, and all the members of the Stashute family, and the well-being of Amy. I pray for Ed Almer, for Gary and Mike Scorcia, for Marilyn Salonia, and Constance Polio. For Nick Martone, Jerry and Michael Pangalo, Captain Tim Murray, 
Dottie Lauer, Norma Calabrese, John Glauder, Joseph Lovett, Marie Casavecchi, Carolyn Duvall, Bob and Pat Caliban, Scotty and Nina Passarelli, for Joe and Peggy Bauman, for Tom Sully O'Sullivan, and for Joe and Richie Rella. I pray for Lorenzo Bronzini, for Joseph P. Callahan, for Lynn Lane and Ed Birch, for Michael Goff and Mike Long, for Virginia Kegney, for Sister Mary Angela Buser, BVM, for John Michael Lowe, for Mary and Donata Forlenza. I pray for Peter Gannon, Margaret and Katie O'Connor. I pray, of course, for uh, the younger Margaret O'Connor as well. For Ben Julik, for Timothy Engelhart, for Victor and Lillian, Bobby and Marge, Tom and Helen, Barlow and Ethel. I pray for Edward Riker, Danny Carlson, Luke Johnson, Evelyn Lalicki. Pray for Christopher Abbott Marco. Pray for PJ O'Rourke, Frank Kilgannon, Pray for uh, Robert and Joan Cook, Ernie Metz, Anna Gomes, Paul Struzzieri, Anna and Peter Canal, Leonardo Playa, Donato Forlenza, Aniello Ferrara, and Marie Hoyecki. For Christine, Lisa, and Marion Harrington, and Marie Gail Penny, and Margaret Freeland. I pray for you, Carizzi. I pray for Melissa Bergman. Pray for Margaret Lasanti and Thomas Chevelle. I pray for Kevin Bayon, as well as Michael A. Diorio. Captain John Robert Minitoli, pray for Father Dennis Wheatley, OFM, for Louise McNeil and Lena Lasanti and Mary Yuli and Genevieve Minitoli, for Virginia Dennert, and among those who have died, I keep in mind Barbara and Joseph Miller, James V. Aquaviva, Mary Camp Campinos, for Joseph Sinkemani, and for Edward Henry, Henry Ed Miller, for Elaine Tiso and Deacon Patrick Logston. For Betty Moore and Donald J. Winkler and Kevin Costigan. For Richard Fasano, Christopher Laybourne, Adina Placido and Helen Kadash. I pray for Bruna Sopa and Jack Carroll. For Madeline Alari and Patricia Lukaszewski. For Anna Maldonaro and James Zidi and Adrian Thayer. I pray for Carmela Labolita, Scott Schneider, Mindy Singer, Lorraine DeRico, Joseph Nestor Mondello, both son and father. I pray for Joseph Paul Walweber, for Vernon Oliver Harmon. I want to pray as well for um, a couple of other intentions. The intention of Linda Zolo. I want to pray too for a couple of ones that just came in. Let me pray for Charles Edward Kalinowski, who passed away recently. For Catherine Cheney, also who passed away recently. I received this in the mail today. Um, dear Monsignor Santi, uh, you've been so good about praying for my parents and my father-in-law. Uh, and when I hear their names, I smile. Can you also add Joan Aquaviva to the list? Um, you have James already, and please, she died August 10th of 2022, so please, if you can, remember Joan Aquaviva, so we do that. And then I have one more that came in. Uh, thank you so much for your masses. We watch them uh, because my husband isn't walking well. He only walks with a walker, and uh, we would very much appreciate if you'd put us on your prayer list as a family. We certainly need those extra prayers. And this is uh, the family is Von Wolverlair, and they come to us from Vulcan, Michigan. So there's so many intentions that come in, and uh, I'd like to remember them all if I can. I mentioned to you that starting in Advent, I'm going to start the list all over again. So if you want me to uh, mention names at that point, please be in touch with me, and I will. But uh, we'll, we'll keep all the names that I've been mentioning on the altar and pray for them, of course. But also we'll, we'll start a new list because um, it's time to start a new list. So with that in mind, I also want to add prayers, as always, for our friends in Ukraine and Taiwan and their continued freedom. I want to pray for all who have the wonderful free right to vote and that will use that right and privilege. I want to pray, too, for all of our men and women in the armed forces. I want to pray for our first responders, our police, our firefighters, our EMT. I want to pray for uh, Paul Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi's husband, and his continued well-being and safety, and that there never, ever be acts of political violence in our country again. I want to pray, too, for an end to the pandemic. It's not gone. There are people every week we hear about who are sick or who have died, and uh, we need to be vigilant in, in fighting this, this virus that will probably be with us for a long, long time. But we pray for all those who are battling it, doctors and nurses and EMTs. I want to pray for your private intentions and mine, and I want to ask you to join me in taking all these intentions and offering them to the Mother of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed Blessed be God forever. forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. God of love and mercy, in this Eucharist we proclaim the death of the Lord Jesus. Accept the gifts of bread and wine we present to you and help us to follow him always with love, for he truly is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, it is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who is our brother and our Lord. He is the word through whom you made the universe. He is the Savior you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arm on the cross. He put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. In this he fulfilled your will, and he won for you a holy people. So now, with all the angels and saints in heaven, we proclaim your glory as together we sing. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. God of power and might, we praise you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation. He is the hand you stretch out to us who are sinners. He is the way that leads to your peace. God, our Heavenly Father, we have often wandered far from you, but through your Son, Jesus, you have brought us back. You gave him up to death so that we might turn again to you and find our way in love to one another. Therefore, we celebrate today the love and reconciliation Christ has gained for us. And we ask you, Father, to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine by the power of your Holy Spirit so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. While he was at supper on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread in his sacred hands and gave you, Father, thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us 
us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Lord our God, your Son has entrusted to us this pledge of his love. We celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, and we bring you the gift you've given to us, this sacrifice of love and reconciliation. Therefore, we ask you, Father, to accept us together with your Son. Fill us with his Spirit through our sharing in this meal, and may he take away all that divides us. May the same Spirit of love keep us in communion of mind and heart with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. Father, make your church throughout the world a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace. You've gathered us here today around the table of your son in fellowship with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her devoted spouse, and all the saints. In that new world, where the fullness of your peace will be revealed, gather people of every race, every language, every way of life to share in the one eternal banquet with Jesus Christ, who is our risen and our loving Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. We're going to pray now the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. I want you to uh, use this prayer as an opportunity to pray to the Father for the strength to, as we said before, think outside the box. In some ways, we think that we've got it all figured out, but to love beyond all telling, to see in every person, even the person toughest to love, the presence of God, and to work with everybody, even the person we find most wretched, that capacity to love, to welcome everybody, for the capacity in your life and mine to see beyond the limits and to love as Jesus would, let's pray the prayer that he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety. As we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. Amen. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if we were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a couple of announcements, if I can. One is to mention that uh, we had a Mass this past week on All Souls Day for all those who have passed away during the last year. Um, and what comes across in many of those moments when you're with people who've lost family members is that people struggle to deal with their, their sadness, and uh, the bereavement is, is real. Uh, I mention that because in Our Lady of Lourdes, we are beginning another uh, group to support those who are going through the loss of a loved one, a support group for those who are bereaved. And if you live anywhere on Long Island, you're very welcome to join us. All you need to do is call the rectory and uh, by all means come and, and uh, be a part of our support group for bereavement and for the comfort of those who have lost a loved one. The rectory number here is 516-541-3270 and someone will be in touch to uh, let you know about when the group will be meeting. So that's again a bereavement support group 516-541-3270. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, we're going to be installing the Eucharistic ministers this coming weekend. And just to pray for those who are given the privilege after training of re distributing communion, not only at Mass, but going to the homebound and bringing the body of Christ to those who are at home. And what a wonderful, wonderful ministry it is. And we're grateful for those who are being installed and those who have been doing it for quite a while. Um, I wanted to mention as well that uh, we are always in need of support, and so if you think that you might be interested in being supportive of Our Lady Lewis Parish, please don't be shy about being generous. We welcome the generosity, and uh, I think that's about all I wanted to mention, except, yeah, always I'd like to invite you to be with us on Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti, either by listening to it on Sirius XM uh, or by, if you like, uh, just being someone who goes to YouTube on your computer and punches in personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti. You know that um, all of us look to priests and we hope we're going to be inspired by priests and that's why each year I try to interview a newly ordained priest and on the program this week is Father Christopher Heller, newly ordained just this past June and he was just a wonderful, wonderful young man and talked about his journey to priesthood very much worth a listen to see why a young contemporary man who could have done many other things with his life uh, chose priesthood. And so listen this week to Father Christopher Heller. And the next week, my guest is uh, Adam Cantor. Adam Cantor is an actor mostly on Broadway from musicals like The Band's Visit and uh, playing uh, a lead in the musical Fiddler on the Roof, uh, has done TV work as well. But a wonderful, wonderful young man of the Jewish faith who talked about what his Jewish faith and culture mean to him. And I was more intrigued. I had read about him in the New York Times because he uh, spends a lot of time when he's in New York living with his uh, uh, grandmother, who's in her late 80s, and it talks about the wisdom we can derive by spending time with uh, the seniors around us. Sometimes people see senior citizens just people to be tolerated, but Adam had a different point of view. To see the wisdom 
and the goodness of these folks and to learn from them and to give them support and love. So wonderful interview with Adam Cantor. He'll be our guest next week. Uh, I just invite you to look into personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Masanti and uh, listen to these good folks talk about their faith and the values that matter the most to them. Let's continue to pray. Lord God, we thank you for the nourishment you give us through this holy gift of the Mass. Pour out your Spirit upon us, and in the strength of this food from heaven, keep us single-minded in pursuit of lovingly service to you. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And And may Almighty God bless you and your families in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. I know that my Redeemer lives. What joy the blessed assurance gives. He lives, he lives, who once was dead. He lives my 